I have been wondering for seven years about how the manufacturers get the numbers they do on this 12 braided Dyneema. Ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. And today, finally, for the first time, I get to find out because we have a machine that we have been building for months in order to pull this extremely slowly. This is 12 braid Dyneema SK78 from Marlowe if you wanna get nerdy, and I have spliced eye to eye on this. And every time I have pull tested this in my machine, I typically get lower numbers than what they say you would get from the manufacturer. And it's because I think I'm pulling at 1400 millimeters per minute, which is fast in the testing world. But that is, I have a dump trailer pump underneath this machine. I push a button and it pulls the hydraulic and that's the, and that's the noise you hear. Well, I have five samples here that we are going to pull in that machine. And then I have five more samples where we're gonna put it in the other machine that we've been building. So this Dyneema is four millimeters and the average braking strength is 20.2 kilonewtons. Now average braking strength is very different than an MBS or a minimum braking strength. Typically, in the best case scenario, MBS is the worst you'll get, which is also not helpful in my opinion, but I think the less helpful number is an average braking strength. What's your range, guys? What's it gonna be when you're base jumping and you really need to know how strong this stuff is? So let's pull on these five samples and see how big of a range we get. Oh, that was loud. That's not 20. Oh, that's pretty consistent. And you can see how it helixes because it doesn't break all 12 of the strands. It always seems to leave one behind. So I'm told by somebody who makes Dyneema that they pull it up to 80% of its MBS or ABS and then settle it back down and back up and settle it back. And they work hard in the thing and then they pull extremely slowly so they can get the best result they could possibly get. Probably because that's what the competition does. <laughs> but that's not gonna be helpful to me when I want to go use this stuff in real, the real world. But now I have a machine to where I can pull this one millimeter per minute instead of 1400 millimeters like we just did. This is the mouse in my pocket when I say we are building a brake test machine. I'm Chase. How long you've been working on it? A couple months now. Yeah, so the wood brake test machine is a video that we've already put out. Oh, the wheel fell off. Oh no. And it's 10 kilonewtons, I mean. I asked you to underbuild it so we could break it. We want to see how it breaks. Uh a little bit cheaper than actually breaking a full scale model. We definitely wanna understand this particular failure mode of what happens when you overload, in our case, the columns. So I'm not just trying to learn about Dyneema here, but having a machine like that helps me answer the Dyneema question. Let us go show you the machine. Oh, welcome to the Slack Snap workspace where I break test my ideas. This is the machine we were talking about. And this is a motor sandwich, which has a motor on both sides turning these screws. And each column is going to be a little bit taller and a lot more beefy. And it moves this cross head up and down like you just saw, which is what pulls against the header fixed at the top. There are three things that make this really cool. Each component comes apart and can be lifted without a forklift. Every machine I ever wanted before required a forklift. And it is small enough that it will fit in any doorway, which means I could put something like this in my lab or we'll have this at the climbing shop. And the third part I'm most excited about is I was told you couldn't do this with 120 volt. And I really appreciate everyone who tells me I can't do something because we're gonna build a 50 kilonewton machine with 120 volt power, which means anybody with an outlet can use this thing. America. We might only put it in inches too, who knows? <laughs> Introducing you to our custom software, uh, we have the graph showing force over time, similar to what we have in the lab. Below that, there is the motion control, which can either 
be done via position or force. So that allows you to either move the crosshead in units of millimeters or inches, or you can move it in units of force. So if you wanna add one, five, 10 kilonewtons to a sample, you can do that. And now for Ryan's favorite part, we can control the speed. All the way down to one millimeter per minute. Which is gonna be really boring. <laughs> While we do want to brake test this machine, we do not need to brake test this expensive monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off and we are going to control the machine remotely, which is another feature that we have built in. We're ready. But are you ready to enter your name at the bottom of Saturday's email to tell us that you want to win $100 worth of any Dyneema size or color that you want? Every week we give away something to people in our email list and sometimes it's niche and I want the people to be excited that they got it. So you have to enter your name saying, I want it. So if you miss this one, sign up anyways. By the way, we have the best priced Marlowe Dyneema online. So these are the five samples we are going to test, but I don't want to compromise them because I don't know if this is going to be the right size columns. So we have a nylon sling doubled up here. So maybe 44 kilonewtons. And we are going to go at 50 millimeters per minute until this thing does something interesting. And then after we swap the comms, we'll do this. I'm very nervous. We've been waiting a long time to do this. So let's start pulling. Record. Record. Oh, it's starting. One kilonewton. We can always slow Three down. kilonewtons. Ah, shit. My safety was on. Okay, four kilonewtons. So something we didn't plan was what do we do if it looks like that and it's not broken? <laughs> so we got to a point where the motors got out of sync from each other and I really have no idea how that happened. But when in doubt, let's turn it off and back on again. <laughs> Get out of there. <laughs> the drives reset when you turn them off and on. Uh, so now they reset the position and that sinking that I was talking about is based on position. So now they think they're happy again. Maybe you should leave the helmet on. <laughs> oh, it's worse. What's so that's another reason this is bad. Mm. So we're rubbing the frame right now. Wow, that is whacked. <laughs> It's so close. Yeah, but I'm afraid if you went any further that that would can... start to hit that. Yeah. I wasn't in, I wasn't anticipating it sticking out like that. Once upon a time, the crossbar was within the collar. What's gonna happen if I cut that? There's a lot of energy uh, that's being stored right now and that's gonna get released. We have plastically deformed uh, this aluminum, so it's not gonna go <laughs> don't back. say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna quite go back to how it was, but it is gonna spring back a little bit. Oh no! The, the ball screw snapped. Holy crap! Steel ball screw versus the spindly aluminum support columns. That's impressive. Everything makes sense in hindsight. The ball screw is a lot harder, meaning it's a lot more brittle, but still. Okay, at this point, we are missing both screws. So we're gonna still see if we can continue to turn this thing. Those are uh, parts of the ball bearings. Pretty sure they come like that. Look at the wave in that piece of aluminum extrusion. It is going out and then completely under the crossbar and back up. <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay. That's kind of, that's kind of pretty. It goes <laughs> Note to self, if you're gonna try and break something, turn off the safety features. They 
They get in the way. They made it more dangerous, to be honest. So that's the inside of a ball screw, apparently. And that is so cool. Once it broke, it actually did better. <laughs> oh, wow. You can see where that crossbar was just rubbing on this. We've been wondering this for months. What's nice is our motor sandwich is still doing fine. So we can now put on our other columns and we'll have a functioning machine again. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, it's safe. So I just preset that to eight kN and we're holding it there for a minute. We're going to pull this at one millimeter per minute and in order to make sure this was working right before we filmed, we did a little cheat test and we tested an old Dyneema sling, one of my first contact Dyneema slings, and it broke way higher than all my other ones because they typically break, the old ones, at 18 kilonewtons. And when it broke at 25-ish, uh, wow, one millimeter per minute is 25 minutes to move this thing an inch. So we're gonna start at eight kilonewtons. I'm already bored. You guys keep an eye on this, we'll be back. 25 minutes? 25 minutes. I'm glad we didn't stay in here for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's higher. That's almost 20. The average that they say is 20.2. Average. It's, I'm still struggling to get up to their average. <laughs> there's, there's no heat. Usually things get hot when I pull them at 1400 <laughs> millimeters per minute. Wow, that's cold. Wow, that's <laughs> cold. <laughs> It'll be the new phrase here. While he swaps this out, let me give you a tour of these new columns. Instead of 16 millimeters, this is 25 millimeters or an inch. These are 25 millimeter aluminum extrusion. Sheetrock always helps hold the house up. And Chase printed a little top hat for this so it doesn't clunk around. <laughs> Header is the same. The motor sandwich is still the same. Let's pull it. Wow, that's pretty consistent. This one didn't helix as much, so two strands did not break, and it didn't helix as much, but dang. That's real close to the last number. On this round, instead of taking it up to eight kilonewtons first to save time, we're gonna start at zero, and we're gonna let this thing run for an hour? It's gonna be really fun. That is so consistent. That one helixed a lot more than the last one. And only one strand survived. Two samples left. I know that's not any different, but the fact that it broke all 12 strands is a different result. So this would be boring if we just broke it one millimeter per minute. So we're gonna do a thousand millimeters per minute because that is the max this machine's going to do. And we're gonna see if we get the same result. I'm gonna move it down a hundred millimeters or four inches and it's already at 2K in. Whoa, that's way faster. Oh, and that's lower. That's different. If you use your Dyneema, make sure you use it really slowly. It drives me nuts. They rate it based on the slower speeds. Yeah. Ask is. me how I really feel. But wait. There's more. I'm actually pretty excited about this test. This is not what you've seen in this episode so far. This is SK99 Max. It's also four millimeter, Dyneema by Marlowe, but they do special, special treatments to this that supposedly make it a lot stronger. And so we're gonna find out if it's as strong as they say. This is 30% stronger than the other stuff, and it is four mil HMPE. And this one has one strand. I think that's very interesting that they can do that with that product. Max 99 isn't just about the strength. It's got other stuff, but we'll go into that in another video. We're actively making another rubber widget to protect a yet another load cell. Because wouldn't it be pretty cool if you can pull up to 50 kilonewtons out in the wild and be able to take that anywhere you go? Well, the second half of that episode literally took all day to film. <laughs> One millimeter per minute is less exciting to do in real life versus watching it time-lapse. We did get the different results that we were expecting. Uh, samples broke consistently higher when pulling at those slower speeds. Pretty cool to be able to do after a lot of years of <laughs> fixed speed tests. I've never had that lever before to, to pull to where I could make it go super, super slow. I have been able to make things go super, super fast. Oh my God. 
What's ironic about drop tests, though, is I actually have not gotten any consistent results in one direction or another. That's weird to me. We are gonna continue to make the Slack Snap machine and the mobile Slack Snap thing better and better. But if you're curious what our first version was, which was made out of wood, you can go watch that episode next. Oh, did we break the right thing? And the wood, we broke the wood.